first question is that f of x equals to x minus two over minus two plus a x is smaller than four. If x equals to four, it's equal to b. And if x is greater than four, it is. Then f of x is continuous. At x equals to four, then a and b value we have to find. Okay, so options are there, and and in options a and b values are there. That is, a is equals to zero, b is equals to zero. Option b is a one, b two. Option C is a negative one, and option B is a one. So we can take out a and b values from here.
Uh, I have a doubt. Yeah, please let me. Know. What should be substitute in place of x? In place of x? Yes. Here it says that it is continuous at x equals to 4. So if it is continuous at x equals to 4, then obviously, obviously left hand limit, right hand limit, and the function's value at 4 has to be seen. Right, and for now? Yes. That means that means we understand that limit limit x tends to four minus left hand limit must be equals to limit x tends to four plus must be equals to f of four. Okay. Four minus if it is smaller than four, then we'll be using this function. Right, so let's use it. Uh, let's use the concept like limit h tends to zero and now, uh, can you understand that mod of x minus four? If x is smaller than four, it will be it will be negative, right? So it will be four minus h. Yes, uh, we can take four minus h. But before that, can you see that it is? Uh, if we will take out it this function if we will take it out from the modulus it will be just x minus 4 over minus of x minus 4 as we understand modulus function very well yes or no yes plus 8 so basically it is nothing but negative 1 plus 8 right yes so even if we are using h and all we will be getting minus 1 plus 8 right yes Getting it, Annapurna? Yes. Okay. And for the right hand limit, exactly same way we'll be getting. That is, that is here uh, in the denominators part, we are having x minus 4. Okay. If you want to use h, yes, we can use it. Like h tends to 0, f of 4 plus h. Okay. And we can substitute it over here. That in numerator, it will be. 4 plus h minus 4 and in denominator it will be mod of 4 plus h minus 4, 4, 4, 1, okay, just h is there, h will come out plus b will be there as it is, okay, in numerator also just h is there and in denominator we will take out positive h over here, okay, plus b, so here we are getting b plus 1, right, Annapurna? Yes. So left hand limit is minus a minus one plus a right hand limit is b plus one and the functions value at four we can see it is a plus b right yes if we will do the comparison over here if we will do the comparison over here that is minus minus one plus a minus one plus a this part is equals to a plus b okay let's compare it minus 1 plus a is equals to a plus b. Can we say comparing both sides is equals to minus 1? Yeah. Or if you want to solve, solve it. b will be minus 1. And if we will compare or we will solve b plus 1 is equals to a plus b. b plus 1 is equals to a plus b. If we will solve it, suppose you, you are solving it and b and b is getting cancelled out. So can you, can we say A is 1? Yes. Are you getting it on the phone now? Yes. So our A value is 1 and B value is negative 1. That is option number 4 is the correct option, right? Yes. Is it crystal clear? Yes.
Let's do this. F of X is equal to this one is two D square minus four D. By x is to x infinity and the question is Find the value of k. The given function, given function is continuous in its domain. Then find the value of a. This is the question.
Uh, I got two equations. Here it looks like two points are there which can be problematic point and one yeah. of them is one. Yeah. I got a equals one and b square minus two b equals one. A is equals to one you got, right? Yeah. So basically a value only we have to get from like we need to find from. Let me check with you. If we'll be checking one minus H. Yeah. It is less than one plus one. So square by E. Just so we all must be getting one by eight, right? Yes. So we can say a square is one. A is plus minus one? Yes. 
we will leave answer like this a is plus minus we are done okay let's do the next question so sometimes you will be getting this type of function also you should not get confused with such if the function is given like this i'm i'm showing you one of the example the same concept you need to apply in all the question which is like this so suppose here is sin x plus again under root is there sin x plus again under root is there sin x plus again root is there okay just all the roots are inside each other like this sin x plus one more root is there like this and till 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 infinity okay this this process is going to continue till infinity and if we have to find dy oh okay here we have to prove that dy dx is equals to cos x by 2y minus 1 Okay, let's see how to deal with such scenario. So I'm I'm going to show it to you because this type of question we have not discussed, right? So if we'll be having such scenario, Anupuna, what we'll do? Now? Y is equals to the big O square root sine sine x, and since it is going till infinity, the exactly the same pattern. Can we write this all the remaining one as just y because? Like if we will just uh, exclude one root, then nothing will happen, right? Still, it is y, right? If the process is going till infinity. Yeah. Are you getting my point? This question was in the assessment. Was there in the assessment? Uh, so yeah. Uh, let's discuss it. So. Even though if we will reduce one of the like sin x we have written and then we have written y, you must be thinking that like we have taken one of the root, then how we are writing the remaining one as a sine? So let me tell you, it is going till infinity. Okay, so even if we are taking out one of the root sine, doesn't matter, right? Yeah. So we are having over here y is equals to this is what we are having. If we will do a squaring on both sides. We will be having y square is equals to sine x plus y, right? Anupuma. Yes. Now we know we know how to find d by dx in this type of if we are having this type of function like uh, uh, y and x all are just mixed up, then we know how to do the derivative on both sides with with respect to x. So let's do it. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. Let's do it. So, what are we going to have? Uh, two y into dy by dx equals cos x plus dy by dx. Let's collect dy by dx. If we will take out common dy by dx, what what will be left with? Two y. Into one. A minus one. Into one minus one. If we take it to this side, will it be into two minus one? Yes. Cos x. That means dy over dx is equals to cos x by two y minus one. Right on the corner, and that's what we wanted to show. Yeah. It's simple, right? Yes. Let me give you few questions, which is like this. Y is equals to x plus one by x plus one by x plus one by x plus dot dot. Here we have to show that if I want to first try it, then we will be discussing it. 
y by 2 by minus x. This 2 by minus x over. This 2 then will be discussing this one. I got y by 2 by minus x. Okay, you got it. Whatever we wanted to prove, you got it, right? Yes. Let's, let's proceed. We can use the same concept even with them. If we are having y is equal to sin x over. 1 plus cos x by 1 plus sin x by cos x sin x by 1 plus cos x by 1 plus sin x by
1 plus 2 y plus cos x minus sin x. Should y come after the denominator, like after the first cos x? To the first cos x, let's identify the pattern. So here we are having cos x by 1 plus sin x again. Cos x by 1 plus sin x, this is how we are getting the pattern, right? Yes. So it should come after 1 plus then y? Yes. Yes, it, it should come after 1 plus then y. Actually, uh, from here we are getting the pattern. It is getting repeated, right? Right? Yes. Okay. So 1 plus also, instead of the circle part, I will circle this one question. From here, it is getting repeated. Just a second, let me check whether I have copied it correctly. Sin x was there, then 1 plus cos x by in the denominator of cos x, we are having 1 plus sin x. Yeah. And in the denominator of sin x, okay, we are having like this. Uh, yeah. So, this, this is what is getting repeated if you will focus. The sin x. Here, here we are having sin x and here again okay, that sin x is there, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, so according to our understanding, if we will focus that how y is getting repeated, so 1 plus cos is still there, okay? Why? 1 plus, this 1 is not, this 1 was not there initially, right Anapurna? Initially, this one is not there. Initially, yes. this one is not there. So, we cannot take that as a y. However, the sin x by 1 plus, this pattern looks like, yeah, now it is getting repeated. So, 1 plus y. This is how we can take? Yes. Getting it, Anupurna? Yes. Another side is one. Yeah. Now, we will work on it. So y is okay. Let's take the LCM. Let's do it together. Let's take the LCM in the denominator. 1 plus y is the LCM, right? Yes. Here we'll be having 1 plus y plus cos x. Is it so? Any confusion on the problem? No. So y is okay. Okay. Sin x will be zero. And in denominator, we are having 1 plus y plus cos x. And this 1 plus y, okay. 
So this will go to the numerator part. Is it so? Yes. So this is what. Okay. If you want to multiply, let's multiply. Or if you want to leave it like this, it's completely up to us. So we are having signs. And this, the denominator part, we can take it to other side. That is also okay. Rather than applying the division method, we are more comfortable with the multiplication. U into V, right? Yes. Yeah. So we can take this 1 plus y plus cos x over here. And the into y is still here. We are having the sin x. 1 plus y. Confusion so far? Anything more? No. Either you want to multiply this y, you can multiply or you can apply u to v method. So now let's multiply y, y square and then y cos x, right? Yeah. And here also, here also sin x plus y sin x, right? Now it looks like it became very simple, right? Y is just dy over dx. 2y is, uh, sorry, y square is 2y, dy dx, right? Yes. Plus y cos x is first function, derivative of second function. Plus second function, derivative of first function. Yeah. Let's do it on the side. Tell me what I'm going to have. Cos x. Plus. Dy by dx into sin x. Minus y into y. Oh wait, it's not minus. It's plus y into cos x. You can see so many dividers, and that's what we need to collect over here. Here we can see. Here we can see. Here we can see and here we can see. Okay, so dy by dx. One plus two y plus cos x. Right on the corner. Yeah. And minus if it will be taking sin x to this side, it will be minus sin x, right? Are yeah. we missing any dy by dx? Are we? No. To y cos x, this will go to other side. What are we going to have? Plus y sin x. And the planet part will be going to. The denominator. The denominator. We are having one plus two y plus cos x minus sin x. Now we need to get back and we need to check are we done with the proof part? So it's one plus two y plus cos x. This denominator exactly we are having, right? Yes. Numerator, let's check it. Yes, uh, we missed one term. See, cos x was there, right? Just cos x. Yes. That's right. See that in the next step, I have not written this cos x. Confusion on the corner, and that's what is there in the proof part also. That cos x is taken. It is the common and y plus 1 was there in the bracket. Proof 
part. Okay, accordingly we are just arranging it. Confusion and a good. No. Let me check out the next question. So the next question is this one. If u is equal to sine and cos inverse s, p is equal to cos and sine inverse s, then prove that. Is to it and
Yes, are you able to do it on the phone? Yes. Yes. 
just I'm almost done. Uh, I got cos into m cos inverse x by sine into m sine inverse x. You go cos into m cos inverse x. by sine into m sine inverse x. This is uh, du by dv. Okay, so yeah, we are done. We can write this cos theta. Let's say this is theta. So we can write it as under root one minus sine squared. Can we? Yes. Can we? And then we can put that this is nothing but u, right? Yes. And in the denominator also, we can do the same thing. Sine theta can be written as 1 minus cos square theta. That too inside the root sign. And then we are done, right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Now the next question is, if x is equal to sine inverse 2t by 1 plus t square and y is equal to tan inverse 2t by 1 minus t square. If we try it then what? Prove that a by dx is equal to minus one. Let's do it again and then we have one more. Okay.
Uh, almost. If I get a uh, sine inverse sine 2 theta, then can x be 2? Like this. T is equals to tan. What you have taken? Tan theta? Yes. So theta will be tan inverse 2, right? Right? Yes. So from here you are saying that you only go to theta. That means you only go to tan inverse 2. Right? Yes. Getting it? Yes. Okay, this is how we'll be doing it. X is there, but we will not get confused with X since we are assuming T. So, whatever we'll be getting, we'll replace this theta and T will be getting tan plus T will be getting. So you are done with the proof, right? Yes. Yes. 
Suppose this type of question will be there. That question is, and this type of question do come in board exam also. That differentiate x to the power x with respect to if you have seen previous year question paper then you must have seen this type of question and you will be thinking that we have not discussed it with respect to let me type it x log x okay and you will be thinking that so far we have not discussed this type of question maybe uh, we have just started the concept we have just started with the calculus maybe later on we'll be discussing but no this is the chapter where we have already discussed this concept that how to differentiate this one with respect to this one. how to do it on the corner any idea so this is we are having u we can take u is equals to x to the power x and v is equals to x log x and basically we have to find the u over d getting it yes differentiating u with respect to v differentiating u with respect to v so the u over d v we are supposed to find over here right yeah let's do it let's do the derivative of d u over dx then we be over dx then we be finding the u dp and let's do it so whenever you will see this type of question from now onward you will be able to do that right yeah let's do it please do it and let me know what is d u over d what is the derivative of x to the power f with respect to x from x
Are you done? I'm not doing that. Isn't the derivative of x raised to x and x log x the same? Let's check it. Yeah. But now we'll be getting. We'll take log on both sides, right? Yes. So here, log q will be zero. So it would be x log x, right? Yeah. So we get one by two d u d x. Right, Anupama? Yes, and that's one plus log x. Yeah. X log x would be there, and plus. x 
next we have done for your progress review and then we will be doing the next one day. And the UDX will be will be here. You can be written as X to the four X. Yes or no? Yes. It will be doing the other one. UDX. So we will be getting the one plus log X, right? Yes. The UDB. The UDB. What this log X is getting cancelled out, but still we are having X to the power X, right? Yes. This is what you have also got, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We will be getting this one. Okay. One plus log X, yes. X log X and log uh, X to the power X, then we'll be taking log, it will become same only. But here we are getting one extra term and that will only remain. So differentiate X to the power X with respect to that. We have done the differentiation and the result is X to the power X. If this will be MCQ question, if option A, option B, option C, option D will be there, then we'll be able to mark that option uh, wherever x to the power x is there, that is the correct option, right? Yes. Okay, now let me take out one question, which was there in this year question paper. Exactly same question was there in MCQ question. Okay, I need to search it. I'll uh, If I'll take...